Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Matthew Varga here. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the six mistakes that most beginners make when getting started with investing. When I first started investing, I definitely made all six of these mistakes. So I'm hoping that by watching this video, you guys are gonna learn some of the mistakes and how to avoid them. And hopefully it's gonna save you a lot of money and headache in the future. So most of my past videos have been specifically about real estate investing, but I really wanna open up and start doing some more videos about personal finance, retirement planning, stock investing. A lot of people might not know, but I actually have a background in financial planning. I was a certified financial planner. I did that for years. And the knowledge and information I was able to accumulate over the years helped me retire in my 30s. So I hope to actually be able to help you guys do the exact same thing. I feel like one of the biggest gaps that we have in our education system today is that we really just don't teach enough about personal finance. I mean, really our education system was built on making people good, obedient employees. But it doesn't really teach us about how to manage money, how to invest money, how to make money work for you, how to set yourself up for early retirement. These just aren't things that aren't taught in our education system. So hopefully I'll be able to provide you guys some value and you'll be able to learn a lot as you follow me along in this channel. So let's jump right into the six mistakes that most beginning investors make. Number one, investing before you're ready. So there's a debate out there about whether you should start investing first or pay off your debt first. I have two different ways of thinking about this, but in general, if you have a high interest debt, like a credit card or a unsecured loan, then it usually makes sense to pay off that debt before you start investing. So for example, if you have a credit card debt and you're paying 19% interest, then by paying off that debt first, you're effectively giving yourself a 19% return on that money that you use to pay off that debt. So in order for it to make sense for you to invest instead of paying off that debt, you're gonna have to get a higher return than that 19% interest that you're paying on that credit card. And since the stock market on average in the long term makes about 10% interest, that means that it really makes sense for you to pay off that 19% first and then invest afterwards. Now, obviously it depends on a lot of different factors, like what you're investing in, how likely it is you're gonna get that return, what your own risk tolerance is and what you're willing to do. If you want me to do a video about that and when it might make sense for you to actually invest instead of pay off debt, leave a comment down below, let me know, and I'll be sure to do that video for you guys. The second big mistake I see people making is paying too much in fees. Paying too much in fees can have a huge impact on your investments over the long term. So there's a lot of different brokerages out there that you can use. TD Bank, uh, Quest Trade, Interactive Broker. So all these companies offer you the same services, but they have different commissions and different rates that they charge for different products. So you wanna make sure that you do your research ahead of time to make sure that the brokerage company that you're using is giving you the best value for your money and has the lowest fees. Personally, I use interactive brokers. I found them to be the most competitive when it comes to the fees that they charge. If you wanna learn more about interactive brokers, I'll leave a link down below and you can check them out, but it's definitely one that I found to be the best for my needs, so definitely one worth checking out. Another area where people are paying way too high of fees for is mutual funds. Now I've worked for big banks before in the past, so I know that as a sales advisor, I was rewarded more for guiding people to invest in mutual funds that are run by those banks. Now, the reason why is because the banks make millions and millions and millions of dollars off of management fees for these mutual funds that they're putting people into. So usually a management expense fee for an actively managed mutual fund can be anywhere between like one to 3%, so say an average of 2%. And over the long term, this 2% fee is gonna have a huge impact on your investments. So just as an example, just using some quick, easy numbers, if you were to invest $50,000 at 12% return for 30 years, your portfolio value at the end of those 30 years is gonna be worth $1,498,000. If you were to take that same $50,000 and invest it in 30 years, but you were to invest it in a fund that had a 2% fee, so your 12% is actually only 10%, your portfolio value after that is gonna be worth $872,000. So that 2% fee, which might not sound like a lot on paper, over the course of that 30 years is gonna cost you $626,000 of return that would have gone into your pocket, but instead is now going into the bank's pocket. Now I understand why people invest in mutual funds, Banks pay millions of dollars in advertising to try to convince people that it's the smart choice and the easy way and it's in the best interest for you. And 
when I first started investing, I did start out with mutual funds because that's what I thought as well. But in the end, there are a lot of better options that you can do that are gonna give you similar outcomes to a mutual fund with way less fees, which means more money in your pocket. If you want me to do a video about that, such as like index funds, ETFs, I can definitely do that. Leave a comment down below and let me know and I'll make sure to do a video for you guys about those things. Third big mistake that I see beginning investors make is trying to time the market. All I can say about that is don't do it. A lot of people hear that saying, buy low, sell high, which is true, but I think it also gives people the wrong idea that they should be trying to time the market, you know, trading stocks at different values, but they've done a lot of studies about trying to time the market, and the reality is, is that it almost never works for people. Uh, it's always better for people to just invest slow and steady over time. One of the best things you can just take advantage of is what's called dollar cost averaging. So by putting money in repeatedly over different periods of time, you're gonna sometimes buy low, you're gonna sometimes buy high, and you're gonna average out to a nice even number. So typically this is a way better option for people than trying to time the market. Make no mistake, trying to time the market is a full-time job. There are people who spend hours and hours a day just going over reports, going over company profiles, trying to time the market. It's stressful, it has a low success rate, and the reality is your investment should make your life easier and less stressful, not harder with high degree of stress. The next big mistake I see people make is not investing at all. They let fear take over and instead of investing in the market, they keep it in a savings account or a GIC, which they think is safe, but they're earning next to nothing in returns and their money is slowly being eaten away by inflation. I understand that the stock market can seem intimidating at first. It seems like whenever we hear a story or we hear something on the news, it's always about how someone lost all their money in the stock market or how a company was doing something shady and the value of that stock plummeted down and people lost their savings. Now make no mistake, you can lose money in the stock market. There is risk involved, of course. But normally when you hear about those stories about people losing all their money in the stock market or these big catastrophes, it's usually people who are taking on way too much risk, investing in speculative stocks or companies that they knew nothing about because they heard a hot tip from someone, people using margin, buying with penny stocks, trying to time the market and just not getting it right. Well, there are ups and downs in the market. If you were to look at a chart of the stock market, it always goes up over time. In my opinion, there is way more risk leaving your money in a savings account, earning next to nothing in interest rate, and just being deteriorated by inflation over time. Everyone knows that the cost of things go up every year, and this is inflation eating away at the value of your money. So if you were just to keep it in a savings account thinking that it's safe, but not earning enough interest to keep up with inflation, the value of your money that you have in that savings account is just slowly losing its purchasing power over the years. So that is way more risky than investing in the market and trying to earn a better return and keep up with inflation. The next big mistake I see investors make is not thinking about the tax implications of the investments that they're buying. Taxes are a reality of life. We all gotta pay tax, but not all income is taxed the same way. So whether we're getting interest income or dividend income or capital gains income, they're all looked at differently and taxed in different ways and at different rates. So before investing, I recommend that you get a good understanding of how different investments are taxed. You know, watch some YouTube videos, talk to your accountant, do some research, really get a good understanding and a good base of how tax work on your different investments. That way you can build a smart plan and know which investments to hold in which accounts based on how they're taxed. For example, some investments make more sense to keep in a tax deferred account like an RSP if you're in Canada or a 401k or traditional IRA if you're in the US. And other investments make more sense to keep in a tax sheltered account like a tax-free savings account if you're in Canada or a Roth IRA if you're in the US. When done properly, you can structure things so you pay almost zero tax on investment income that you earned. And this is why it's so important to think of this before you start investing so you can structure things properly. The final mistake that I see a lot of people make is letting other people influence your investment decisions, i.e. just taking bad advice from the wrong people. You may have noticed that when you talk about wanting to get into investing, everyone has an opinion. Everyone's telling you what you should invest in, why you should invest in it. 
The amount of times that I've heard how I should invest in this company and how they know someone who made millions of dollars of that, off that company. And then when you ask them, okay, well, how much have you invested in that company? The answer is always zero. So you have to take what people say with a grain of salt. Even when I was first getting into real estate investing, I can't count how many times I heard people say that real estate is a bad investment, that I'm gonna lose all my money, that renters are never gonna pay rent, and the bank's gonna take the home, and I'm gonna go bankrupt. If I would have listened to those people, I would have missed out on millions of dollars that I've made in real estate. So once again, you just have to be careful with who you listen to and make sure that the people who are giving you advice are actually investors who have actually have real world experience and they're not just telling you something that they heard from a friend of a friend or that they read in a news article or saw on a Facebook sponsored ad. Like you really gotta be careful with what advice you take. The reality is, the only person who cares about your investments and your financial future is you. So you need to make sure that you're doing the research, you're not being lazy, you're putting in that effort and learning about what you need to learn about to make sure you're making smart choices. If you are getting investment advice from someone, even myself watching this video, do the research, make sure what I'm saying makes sense because something that makes sense for me might not make sense for you. The other thing to keep an eye on is it seems like every time someone's giving advice about this type of investment or that type of investment, they just so happen to be selling a course that costs a few thousand dollars, but if you take it, it's gonna make you a millionaire. So always look behind the curtain to know why maybe that person's giving you advice or telling you to invest in something that they're gonna benefit from if you do. So there you have it, the six big mistakes that I see most beginning investors make. Even myself, I made all these mistakes. I really hope you guys learned something from this video. Make sure you share with a friend if you know someone who's looking to get into investing and you think they might benefit from this video. Give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below with any questions or any future investing videos you guys wanna see. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.